Good evening and welcome back to Vegas October 1 Sound. <clears throat> Tonight I'm going to uh, have a real uh, short, simple, and quick video and I'm going to talk about um, broadcasting gunshot sounds through a speaker. Now all of us are familiar with the standard speaker used in audio for audiophile purposes. We call it, It's called a voice coil speaker because inside that speaker you have a paper cone attached to a, typically a, a fine wire voice coil which goes over a magnet and then as we apply current to the voice coil uh, it causes the paper cone to vibrate in and out and that produces the sound that the electric current was representing. So let's talk about um, what happens with that sound uh, out anywhere that you broadcast it. So let's say, for example, that we're going to broadcast this signal and we're going to try to faithfully reproduce the sound of a gunshot, including the lag. So what we'll do is we'll broadcast a sound like this that would represent the the shock wave from the um, supersonic crack and then sometime later we'll do something very similar but lower frequency for the um, muzzle blast and let's say that we put these about oh I don't know two sec uh, one second apart so that's what we run through and into our voice coil which is that's the signal we put into the speaker and it faithfully reproduces it <coughs> now so what do we hear or what what can get recorded out there in uh, observer land I guess we use yellow all right so let's pick three speak three three observers three recording devices one here one here and one here and let's further say that the distance to the speaker for this one is 100 feet um, let's say this one is uh, 400 feet and this one way out in Booney land is no, I don't know, 800 feet let's also assume that sound is, is traveling at 1000 feet per second just for you know easy calculation purposes because at 1000 feet per second you get uh, tr sound traveling one foot every millisecond. So, what do each of these observers hear? Well, to start with, uh, we can make the assertion that this fellow at 100 feet is going to get a pretty loud sound. The guy at 400 feet is going to get a sound that's a you know considerably less intense than the guy at 100 feet. And the guy out at 800 feet, well, you know, he, he might be straining to hear this, the speaker depending upon how loud it is. Now you know if it's the Tower of Power, <laughs> then the guy up front here is going to have his ears blown out. The guy at 400 feet is going to go, man, what an experience. And the guy out there at 800 feet probably is saying, hey, I could have done better at home. But anyway, so what signal does each of these record and when do they record it? The observer here, I guess we'll call this point A, point B and point C and we can start with any of them uh, let's start with the, the guy up front the signal he sees uh, is faithfully faithfully reproduced by the speakers and it's going to be the same exact signal okay only it's him being 100 feet out from the speaker he's going to hear that at uh, speaker A, he hears it at 
0 0.1 seconds after it, it was emitted from the speaker. Okay. And we can do that for each of them. Uh, the guy at position B hears the same sound at 0 0.4 seconds and the guy at C at 0 0.8 seconds. So each of them hears the sound. The further away, the lower the sound is in volume intensity. All right. So that's what happens when we broadcast that nice, clean gunshot sound with lag through the speakers and what everybody hears. Now you notice the time from the start of the crack to the time start of the muzzle is the same in every situation. And that's because the speaker faithfully reproduces the sound and there's nothing between the speaker and the observer to change that timing. So what would happen if we fired a real bullet? Oh, let's get a hot pink for that. If we fired a real bullet, uh, just one, and let's say that bullet went straight down the middle. You know, I kind of don't like that color. So let's go over the top of it. Okay. Well, and, and let's further presume that this bullet is traveling at Mach 3 or 3,000 feet per second. Okay. And this guy is uh, 50 foot away, let's say. And this guy is, well, I don't know, 100 foot away. And this fellow up here is, oh, got to be at least 400 feet away, roughly speaking. So what would they record? Well, without getting exact details, first off, we're going to have the muzzle blast sound. The muzzle blast sound is going to be emitted from this gun firing right here. Well, we'll, we'll presume for the moment that it's at the same starting point as the speaker to make life easy. And it's going to go out at uh, 100 foot to point A. And so, let's see, point A here. The so point A will record a, a muzzle blast sound at point 1. past the time from whenever uh, this, the, the uh, bullet was fired, basically. Point B over here, we'll hear a muzzle blast at, you know, point 4, and similarly, uh, point C, we'll hear the muzzle blast at point 8. So that's starting to sound kind of similar to this. But what about the lag? Well, the lag in, in each of these cases is, is different, and that's governed by the geometry of this and I'll try to, to do an approximate uh, um, estimate of when this is. So for point B we probably have a, uh, a path that looks like this for, for the sound of the um, supersonic shock wave and so in that case we've got the distance traveled from the gun to where it breaks off and leaves and then the propagation time here. And, uh, well, how do we calculate this with ease? If we're going at 3,000 feet per second and we go down about a, uh, oh, I don't know, how far is that? Let's see, it's uh, not 400, let's say it's 300 feet there. Okay, so that's going to be a tenth of a second, right? 300 into that, two zero, what, what, 
3 be 1 over 10. Yeah, that will be about tenth, a tenth of a second to get to here. So we got 1 tenth. 1 tenth to get to there. Plus the time it takes this, which is probably a good, oh, I don't know, 200 feet at the speed of sound. Plus, so that would be two, two tenths. So two tenths. Okay, which equals three tenths. So the supersonic shock shows up at point three. So for point A, we can say show that uh, supersonic shock wave, and then we'll have the this. So this one arrives at point three, and this one arrives as we said earlier at point four, which means that there's a lag of. Uh, one tenth of a second. Now, as you can see, that's not the same timing as this one up there. You, and you say, "Well, oh, I'm going to cry foul because we arbitrarily set the distance between this and this at one second. And of course, it's not going to jive with anything real, you say. Okay, fine. That's okay. But the whole point is that no matter what you broadcast through the speaker, it's recorded the same at every location. Whereas with the bullet, um, it the lag the uh, sent the geometry is going to change, so the supersonic crack gets that at a different time. Let's uh, try to estimate it for this one. So for this one out here, we're going to go. If that was uh, 800 feet, that's probably somewhere on the order of 700 feet to get to this point which if we had that's 7 over th 30 so that's 7 over 30 seconds for the no back up back up <laughs> not making the right calculation gotta be careful there because that's uh, 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 uh. So what we want to do is first estimate where it's going to the, the uh, the path for this supersonic crack is probably going to be oh golly 400 feet. Hmm. I don't know off the top of my head, but at 400 feet. It's going to be probably this is a guess probably on the order of 250 feet there so let's call that 250 feet which is going to give us um, Uh, so for point B, we're going to get, or point point C, we're going to get uh, 0.25. Oh no, this is for the bullet. That's 250 over uh, 250 over 3,000. Okay. Cross off the zeros. Okay, so 25. Or that, let me bring up my calculator here. Twenty-five slash three hundred. So we got point oh eight. Okay. So for B, we got, or for C, rather, we got for the lag, for or for the uh, supersonic crack is uh, zero point. 08 plus the travel time at the speed of sound from 
here to there, which has got to be approaching 600 feet. So let's say 600.6 seconds for that, for a total of 0 0.608 for the supersonic crack, and for point C, it arrived at that, so that's minus 0 0.8 for the muzzle blast, which equals point, roughly 0 0.2 for lag the time. So for that one, then this time now becomes um, the time between the arrival of the supersonic crack and the muzzle then becomes 0.2. Okay, so already we can see that the timing between the supersonic crack and the muzzle blast for real bullet is going to be different for each location. So in that, whereas regardless of how I, what signal I fed into the speakers to simulate the gunshot, it's going to be the same for every location. So you can't simulate the, super, the lag or the difference in times of arrivals between the supersonic crack and lag with a simple voice coil speaker system. Now, you could say that, well, yeah, but I can put in more speakers for, you know, so that I could broadcast the signal to each spot differently. Well, good luck with that, because anybody who's in a, in <coughs> set up a sta sound sta uh, stage knows that the more speakers you add, the more chaos you add to the signal. And what it would end up happening if I put another speaker over here somewhere, so that it, B would hear it at a different time, that sound would be um, broadcast everywhere and you'd end up with each of these points recording all of the signals for all of the speakers, just as you would you know, with uh, a band on stage playing through multiple speakers, all the positions here, those sounds, just with a slight different thing. And if you're broadcasting the same sound through all the speakers, which are you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 feet, ap feet apart on stage, that's a bad arrangement it really detracts from a good solid sound. So as in the case with the the, the uh, uh, Tower of Power, what they did was they had a single channel for each thing and then that single channel was pumped through a series of speakers all located at roughly the same spot on the stage and they'd have multiple channels you know for various different tracks. So with voice coil system, voice coil speakers, you cannot reproduce the realism of the lag which varies by from location to location with a fixed timing speaker. You have to do, use something more complicated. So I hope that um, people who want to say well this gun sound of the gunshot was recorded on a mic and broadcast over the venue that's you know entirely possible it was but when you hear the signals, and particularly when you look at it on the recording with a spectrogram and you're seeing these nice, clear um, supersonic cracks and muzzle blasts whose timing varies by location, then you know you're, you're not hearing them from the speakers. Now, if there were in the recording multiple images of those sounds, you know, you would see them. But for the most part, we don't see them. Uh, so, in my personal opinion, the speakers were not um, a crucial part of any of the sounds of gunshots that were heard that evening. Um, the speakers did broadcast other things at certain times. You know, they broadcast the music, and I think they broadcast some footsteps of people running on stage also. But that's uh, that's a different discussion. Now, in another video, I'm going to talk about LRAD because LRAD uses a different type of uh, uh, sound, a different type of mechanism to produce sound. It's called a parametric, um, basically it's a parametric speaker. 
but we'll go into that in a different section. The takeaway from this video should be that if you believe that the gunshots were produced by the, a recording over a speaker, first off, you, if you have more than one speaker, you're in big trouble, but if you have one massive speaker, then you'll quickly learn that the timing would be recorded the same everywhere, when in fact it's not. It's, you know, varies from location to location, that implying that this is a real thing, a real phenomena. Okay, hope I didn't muddy the, the waters too much on that. We'll grab you in the next one.